Going on, Renee? Bonjour. Welcome to another live stream edition of Cafe Day, Renee. James here, joined once again by the Star Show, Mr. Renee Dupree. Renee, we've got a returning guest today. Yes, we do. He is the one, the only, Spirit Squad, Mikey Mondo. Boom. Boom, shakalaka, boom, boom. boom. What's, What's going, going on, on Mike? Hey, uh, thanks doing? for having me on the show again. Uh, I know you guys probably have many choices, many guests, and... Uh, no, we you don't. Make time for yours truly, you know. <laughs> we don't at all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I've been, I've been keeping tabs on you guys. You guys got the viewers going. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, we're going up slowly but surely, right? So, um, yeah, tell me, man, you got a new gig as a trainer, right, in uh, New York? What's up? You got a new training gig, like your head trainer for a wrestling school now? Yeah, man, uh, I've been training now with uh, the NYWC Wrestling Academy now for. Um, I say the past three months, uh, I've got about twenty students. It's oh. been a uh, it's been a lot of fun, man. I do that uh, twice a week right now. Hopefully, three times a week soon. So uh, it's been going good. I do it every Thursday, Sunday, and um, yeah, man. So it's uh, got a lot of potential prospects there. So it's going good. I'm gonna yeah. head over there tonight after I do the podcast with you guys. Okay, who who run, who owns that NWYC? Uh, NYWC, um, who owns it? Uh, Shane O'Neill owns it. There's a few owners. Um, okay. Mike Norman, uh, Chris Perry, uh, John Kirst used to own it. Uh, he was the guy that broke me in the business. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a few owners there. They've been around for a long time, man. Um, heck, they started me out 20 years ago, you know, and right. they just have a different location now, but uh, a lot bigger facility, kind of like a warehouse type deal. And it's a really nice place. They run shows uh, once a month. You know, pack the house. It's it's, uh, it's a good time. It's good good yeah. experience for the guys. Yeah. So, are you still wrestling at all, or are you just going to concentrate on the training deal? No, man. I'm actually going to make my uh, return to the ring in February, um, February 25th at the Psycho Circus. Uh, my opponent's going to be uh, Dicky Rods, uh, what the wrestling world may know him as, but I know him as Robert Rampino. And you know, I just got some new boots in the mail. I'm going to get uh, fitted for some new gear. You know, I got, I got a new little look here. The hair's coming off in February, you know, and uh, Mike Mondo's oh, going to show everyone what gut check time's all about. That's it's, for sure. It's, it's, it's not, there's not much left to take off there, pal. I know. <laughs> Get the cafe bolt spot going, bro. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah um, so the training gig, I mean, I think you'd be perfect for that because you're always a workhorse, man. That's That's one thing no one can take away from you. You were always in the in the gym training, even Rips classes. You were you were the first one to arrive, last one to leave, and you put the time in. So I, you as a trainer makes a lot of lot of sense. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, you know, uh, it's kind of funny because you know being a trainer kind of fell into my lap back in the back in the day. I want to say it was one of those things where um, they uh, Johnny Ace never really never really saw money in me. I guess that's Why not? It, you know. <laughs> He goes, yeah, he can work, but, you know, how can we make money with him? You know what I mean? I was like, all right, well, I get it, 5'8", you know, not the biggest guy. You know, so Danny Davis put me in a position to, uh, when Nick went on the road, to uh, teach the beginner's class, the amateur class, you know. And then from there, it just kind of transpired, you know, transformed really uh, with Dr. Tom and FCW and, um, you know, back here in New York and NYWC and um, with Lance Storm. Even when the contract class got too big, I was helping out with the contract guys, you know, wow. training them and everything. And I was not contract at the time, you know, so it was a uh, very bizarre, but, so, um, yeah, who are man, some like, of, go ahead. That, uh, who are some of the guys that you trained when you were there? Um, let's see here. Um, Elijah Burke, uh, Shaq Gaspard, uh, JTG, Santina Morella, Serena Deeb, um, Cherry for a little bit. Um, Let's see here. Gosh, I have to really think about that. I know there's a few more, man. But I mean, I if if I didn't start from the ground up, I there's a lot of guys that at least I contributed to their training. You know what I mean? Um, stuff like that. So um, yeah, man, I got to play a hand in a lot of guys. You know, I, I feel you know from back in the day and stuff like that. Um, and uh, just happy that they got to achieve success and live a dream like I have. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, that's the thing. Like a lot of people want to get into the business. I mean, I. I Sure, everybody wants to be the main event at WrestleMania or Wrestle Kingdom or whatever. But, I mean, if you can make a living doing this, 
I mean, what's what's better than that? I mean, if this Perfect. is your passion, whether it's a trainer or a referee or even just being around the business. Exactly. You know, that's my goal. That's, that's my goal, goal for 2023, bro. You know, it's to uh, make a living in the wrestling business, you know, with WWE, AEW, would that be great? Sure, you know, but I just want to, like, just tour the world again, you know. I want to just get out there. Uh, you know, I want to show people. I'm going to be 40 years old in March, you know what I mean? But I want to show the world I can still go. You know? don't look a day past 39. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> you just celebrated a birthday too, Renee. I know, man. Uh, you're actually older than me, right? Because I, I just turned 39 December, so I'll be 40 next December. So you're like a few months older than I am, right? Right, right. Wow. Uh, Damn. That's crazy, Damn. man. <laughs> I remember when I was... Um, I was scouting OVW and I was like, you know, like you look at the roster page, you know what I mean? And it's like, okay, yeah. I can, I can hang with this guy. I can hang with this guy. And then I got to your picture, freaking Jack Chisel, <laughs> freaking, uh, Renee Dupree. And, and you remember you, you were like this in, in the photo, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, okay, yeah. well, that guy, I don't mean, maybe I, you know, I got to work out a little bit harder. <laughs> uh, man, you look like hey, a million James, bucks. You, you still got... do, man. You know? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm getting older and, you know, the fucking oh, see, we gotta watch our cuss gun here. YouTube flagged us, so I gotta tone down the language a little yep. bit. Yeah, oh, we're having that all my drinking. Okay. Yeah, we'll keep it PG thirteen then. There yeah, we go. well, you know, we're training with Rip Rogers all the time. Being around him since I was thirteen, it kind of like, you know, I got f bombs coming out every other word. You know how it is. Get out, get out of the ring. Yeah, you're rotten. You kind of become second uh, nature. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, James, you got any, you got any um, questions? What's up, James? For... How you doing? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, body cut. You being one of the main guys in OVW, do you keep up with OVW these days? And if you do, what do you think of Al Snow's running of it? Oh, I'm sorry, can you uh, you broke up there a little bit? What'd you say? Sorry. Yeah, obviously you're one of the main guys. What was in OVW? Uh, do you still keep up with OVW? And what do you think of Al Snow's uh, running of it? Man, um, you know, I got to say, I don't keep up with uh, the product itself, you know, OVW, but I, um, man, I got to, uh, I can't watch the cursing. I got a ton of respect for uh, Al Snow, man. Um, I emulate, honestly, my training, what I do today after uh, two people mainly, uh, that's Rip Rogers and Al Snow, you know, um, Al really opened my mind to a different horizon uh, in, in the wrestling business, as far as psychology goes and really putting a match together, he was the guy that kind of really implemented in my brain that, you know, every match doesn't have to be uh, that typical formula of the shine, the heat, uh, the hope spot, the comeback, the false finishes, the finishes, you know, like um, he taught me like that there's a specific like business or aspect objective to the match that you need to get across. And whether you have three minutes, four minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is to structure that accordingly and to, uh, get, you know, at least get what you're trying to get across. Um, he also really was uh, vital in, like, not just going out there and being a wrestling guy in tights, and, you know, and to incorporate your personality and your character and to work your gimmick uh, in the match, you know, um, to stand out, you know, and be different from everybody else. Um, he also was a guy that really just um, – just took my psychology to the next level. You know, I mean, every match is what's the gimmick of the match. You know, if it's a singles match, just try to win and try not to lose. If it's a cage match, what's the gimmick of the match? You know what I mean? To try to escape, try to go through the door, you know, and try to uh, pinfall submission, whatever it is. So you want to implement those things within the first few minutes of the match. So the people are educated. Okay. This is how you can win. This is how you can lose, you know, and to really um, just kind of take your psychology game to the next level. Um, you know, I was one of those guys, of course, and I'm sure we've all been there that, you know, maybe we thought we knew more than what we really did when we were younger, you know, but, you know, Al was patient with me and, you know, he stayed on me and I think he saw potential in me and he was just one of those guys that really drove, you know, his points home, you know, and I remember when I went to FCW, I had my last match, it was against Atlas the Bone and he's been trying, uh, Ricky Ortiz, I think his name was in WWE. And he was just trying to get me to slow down like so much, you know, and that's just one of the hardest things I feel guys have a hard time grasping, especially you guys, you know, that I train today is just trying to get them to slow down, you know, and 
finally he's like, Al's like, you're leaving the territory and now you freaking finally learn how to slow down. Like, you know, and it was just, uh, anyway, I thought that was a, a good milestone, you know, for, uh, for me to at least, I was like, I finally made Al so happy once, you know, there we go. But, uh, I, I, I appreciate him being the way he was. <laughs> and that's, that's what you need to be to be a good coach. You know, you need to stay on them, you know, it's tough love and, um, you know, they see potential in you and you want to get the maximum mileage out of uh, the individual. So, yeah, nothing but great things uh, to say about Al. Uh, much respect to him and uh, wouldn't be the wrestler I am today if it wasn't for him, you know. And, uh, of course, that goes without – everyone knows I'm a Rip Rogers guy. So, uh, of course, Rip, you, know, you, you could – I can't leave him out too, you know. Uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be the guy, you know, the wrestler I am today either. We got our first Super Chat of the night. Let's uh... – Yep. Uh, Royal culture. Who was the s- stiffest worker you wrestled? You the stiffest worker that I've ever wrestled. You can't say me. <laughs> the stiffest worker. Oh man, man, oh man. I gotta think about that one. Uh, man, I mean, stiffest worker I've ever wrestled. Oh, <laughs> the big O. Yes, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of him. Oh, uh, Matt, I know who that is. Um, Matt Kurt Cardona's, uh, uh, yeah, it's like his good friend or something like that. And not Kurt, I, those uh, YouTube videos ooh, back in the day. Zach Ryder, Zach Ryder's buddy. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man, uh, oh, geez, uh, man. no disrespect if he's listening or not, but fuck, man, crow. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I specifically had the timeout when I was bumping and feeding because when he was going to clothesline me, I'd have to jump up a little bit just so I didn't get clothesline to the jaw, you know? <laughs> yeah. Blood coming out of my freaking mouth, you know? And uh, one time I remember, um, and we did the spot, because I worked him a few times, you know? And nice guy, you know, really nice guy. But, <laughs> in, you know, real life, nice guy. But I was just, uh, we did the spot, you know, the Razor Ramon thing, uh, the fall away slam, you know, yes. the deal. And we did it, uh, you know, a few times or whatever. This one time, though, he decides to catch me in the cross body and just tosses me over his freaking head. You know, and I remember I landed awkwardly on my freaking ribs. And uh, another time I got, I was doing a three-way with uh, Tony Nice and the Big O. And... Um, you know, poor niece, man. He had to catch me. I did a moonsault to the outside from the top rope, and you just see the big old part to see. <laughs> oh, and Mondo wow. just goes crashing and burning on the freaking, uh, you know, the hard floor. Oh. I was like, okay, that's. I, I, you think I understand by now? You got to pick your spots and make sure you can trust the guy to catch you if you're gonna right. do something like that. Right. I was feeling a little overzealous that day, but you're trying thanks, to get your shit in is what you're trying me. to do, there, Mondo. Getting your shit What's in. that? You're trying to get your shit in, is what you're trying to do. Yeah, I was trying to get my shit in. You know, the parents were in the crowd. <laughs> good. <laughs> All right, we yeah. got another one from The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, uh, yep. Uh, what was your initial reaction to the Spirit Squad gimmick? Um, yeah. You know, for me, I was, I was stoked. I was happy about it. I was at a point in my career at the time where um, – you know, I, uh, I don't know, Renee, if you've been there before or not, but, you know, you just kind of feel lost a little bit. Every you day. know, you kind of just, you don't know what's next or what, what you're doing. You know, you're, Every day when I wake you're up, having man. matches just to have matches. And it's just like, okay, well, what's next, you know? And, yeah. man, like, um, so for me, I was stoked. I was happy because I finally had some direction. And I was like, okay, cool. This is what they want me to do. It's a Vince McMahon idea, so it's going to be a good idea. Um, you know, it's probably going to get pushed to the moon, you know, and, and it did because we worked, you know, the main events pretty much right away <laughs> within the first couple months when we were on the road. So, um, you know, I was, I was stoked for it. I was prepared to embrace the opportunity, you know, and, and that's what I did. We, we got sent to cheerleading school. I don't know if people know that or not. We got wow. sent to gymnast- the university of Louisville and, uh, we're taught by gymnasts to do the handsprings and the backflips and all that. And, you know, it was a seven day a week, you know, full-time job on trying to learn this, this, uh, this gimmick, you know, and unfortunately we, we still weren't in sync half the time when we were on live TV. <laughs> yeah. You put you the know, blame on Mitch. We did the best we could. <laughs> you put the blame on Mitch. Is, is Mitch oh, he's fault. always on Mitch. 
heats over. <laughs> yeah, and figure, figuratively and uh, yeah, for real. Yeah, <laughs> he was always on the mix. Unfortunately, that branched off on all of us. <laughs> right. Yeah, he threw association. Yeah. Well, we got a lot of super chats coming. In. A lot of questions for you tonight, there, Mando. Yeah, uh, Chris Actor, thank you. Uh, Mondo, love your treats, giving insight and spreading knowledge about the business. Were you a WCW guy or WWF guy in the 90s or maybe an ECW guy? Yeah, what was your favorite, man? Who's my favorite? Like, of all the promotions, like in the 90s when the big fucking boom hit. Oh, Honestly, man. yeah, man. I was, uh, you know, growing up in New York and stuff like that. I, yeah. I have to favor WWF, you know what I mean? Uh, that, that's what I grew up on, um, you know, but it, it wasn't until I got into high school where my uh, a good friend of mine who still is to this day, he actually enlightened me to WCW. And that's when I kind of the Monday Night Wars would. Uh, and that's how crazy and obsessed I was with wrestling is I remember uh, Nitro was from eight to nine. So I'd watch that live. And then uh, I would tape Nitro from 9 to 11 because I would tune into Raw and watch that live. And then when Raw was over, I'd take my VHS tape out and then watch Nitro till like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And then i go to bed and go to school the next day, you know. And um, a, another buddy of mine in high school who was a big ECW fan, uh, he and uh, turned me on to that. The thing is with ECW though, it was on like at two in the morning, you know, wow. but my, my dad would like, let me stay up. I remember, uh, I think it was Thursday nights or Friday nights and, you know, I'd watch it and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I became a big ECW fan as well. I, I just wanted to watch wrestling. I was happy to watch wrestling, you know what I mean? And uh, anytime I can get my eyes set on that, cause I knew what I wanted to do. So I just wanted to take in as much as I can. And, uh, that's what I did. The nineties was such an awesome time to be a wrestling fan, weren't they? Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Great time. Yeah. Really we got cool. another one here from uh Strawberry Soda. Yeah, new fan of the show. Thank you, Strawberry Soda. Uh Mike, you uh were you happy when WWE finally signed Serena Deep as a diva? I know she was in OVW for years, worked hard before actually giving developmental deal. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was very, very happy for Serena. Uh, especially since she was uh, a student of mine when she first came to OVW in the uh, beginner's class. So it was so nice to see her uh, excel and to uh, get her break, you know, finally. You know, she reminded me of a, a female version of me, you know what I mean? And um, she was a workhorse. She was a wrestling machine. You know, she can go in there and call a match on the fly. Um, and, you know, what? she did what she had to do to get noticed, you know what I mean? She... Uh, she got her nose redone, you know, she got the, the boobs enhanced and, uh, you know, she she just had, to, she knew what she had to do as far as a, a look was concerned, you know what I mean? And um, she uh, just, just finally got her break, you know, and I was really happy to see that. Uh, little people, I don't know if people know this or not, but me and Serena used to date for a couple of years, you know? I and, knew. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. And uh, yeah, so, but we, you know, she was actually one of the first people that I didn't like end on a bad note and we still became like friends and stuff like that. So, uh, we're still, you know, good friends to this day. So, uh, yeah, it was really, really cool, you know, and it's funny because like our lives kind of like emulate each other a little bit, you know, I feel like we were both like Rip Rogers guys, you know, and then like, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little superstitious and weird, but let's like, you know, I was in a faction. She was in a faction. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just, uh, kind of like our careers kind of like just uh like mirrored each other a little bit you know but uh i was happy to see her have her big moment you know uh wrestlemania and everything like that and you know kudos for her for shaving her head you know and i don't think a lot of women would have the balls to do that so um yeah uh, most you know, women don't have balls mondo <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> yeah what do you i know what you're saying yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, man, you got me on that one. <laughs> um, what do you think of her work in AEW? Because probably been some of the best. Well, for her being highlighted as like a main draw in AEW, she's really shown since joining the company. Out of all the women there, she's definitely at the top. So, what do you think to her work in AEW? Mm. Yeah, I, I've seen a, a couple of her matches, actually. You know, I have to I have to admit, I don't watch the product on, on a steadily basis, but, like, I tune into, like, the clips I see and try to keep up with it online, you know, whatever I see and stuff like that. But, honestly, she's the one wrestler that I've seen on that show that actually works a body part, you know? And I was like, damn, it's about time, you know? Um, 
because from what I saw, just a lot, you know, some of the guys on there, they just uh, like their house is there. And, and I use this uh, analogy, but that the, the foundation is missing, you know, the foundation, meaning the fundamentals and the basics and the kind of the wrestling one on one things, the things that you should know and have down packed, you know, Renee, like repetition, 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 you know. And I feel uh, that that's kind of missing, you know, and I mean, they got the moves and all that, and that's great. But, you know, um, the psychology, you know, that that's the main thing, you know, that that's missing in my my uh, opinion and stuff like that. I agree 100 percent with you, Mondo. We got yeah, another man. one from Raw Culture. Yeah, uh, great question. Um, any Eddie Guerrero or Chris Benoit stories? Were you around them much, Mondo? Um. Man, uh, no, I, I honestly wasn't. Um, I mean, I was, uh, this was, bef- gosh, I was just, honestly, I was getting booked as an extra. This is way, way prior Spear Squad. And, um, you know, uh, I was mostly just high and by, honestly, you know, with Eddie yeah. and Chris and stuff like that. Um, but uh, no, I don't really have much, uh, not much interaction with them, I think. I mean, <laughs> Okay. I was yeah. there, however, though. I was there, however, when Eddie passed away, though, uh, because I remember I was booked for Ring Crew, and um, I remember Chris K. Uh, he met me at the hotel, and he told me that Eddie Eddie just passed away and everything like that, and that was the TV I was going to, and um, so I remember it was really weird setting up the ring that day, um, and I just remember a lot of people just. I remember we had a meeting with Vince. And I was in that meeting and uh, he just explained everything that was going on and that he nixed all the TV and that it was going to be a tribute show. And I believe Shawn Michaels wrestled uh, Rey Mysterio that night, I remember. And uh, there was just a lot of tribute matches and stuff, but it was a really weird atmosphere. Um, obviously, a lot of people crying and uh, upset. And, um, you know, you know, it was, it was just really, it was sad. But I, I hate to beat that the story that I give with my experiences with, with Eddie and, or, or Chris, but I, I really didn't have much interaction with them. And, you know, yeah. I wish I did. Wish I did. Was more. that, was that TV taping in Indianapolis? Yeah. Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, it was. Indiana, yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I do remember Chris coming down to uh, OVW to, uh, to work with uh, Mike Cruel. And, uh, that, you know, that was really cool. And I got to pick his brain. Oh, all the whatever best. happened to Mike Cruel, he was so good. Dude, he was great. He was awesome, he was awesome. man. I know. Uh, you know, he was one of those guys, because I, I spent time with him in not only OVW, but also FCW. And right. he just, uh, he was burnt out, man. He, he lost his passion for the business, you know. Um, you know, it's sad to say, but he just really didn't care anymore. You know, it was right. like, he's just like, but he was so good. Like, he can try to do bad and. It was still all right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. One no, of those he, guys. <laughs> he had a trade as an electrician, right? Like he had a, he was an electrician yeah. by, by trade. Yeah. So he, he knew him. Plus, I mean, uh, cause he would always show up. I think he was his wife. So, I mean, the guy had a trade where he could make good money. He had a beautiful mm-hmm. wife, probably wanted a family and said, screw it. Right. Yeah. Hey, man, <laughs> if you can walk away and still be successful and be happy in life. My hat's off to you because yep. a lot of us, a lot of us can't give up. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> okay. We got another one from yeah, Pokemon man. Trainer. Uh, yep. Uh, the questions. There we go. This is new to me. Yeah. Thoughts on the Pat Rook, uh, Pat, Pat Rook, Pat Book, Ryback Rift. You know both. Oh, yeah. The Rift. Uh, man, is that when they uh, had like a falling, a out? falling out? There's a falling out on there. Uh, so we, I guess that's what he's referring to. I'm not sure, or no. Was that said again? What did the rift? What does that mean? Like the, the heat? Because they were friends. They, they were, they were they friends. Were I think they had a podcast together, actually. Yeah, God, that was years and ago. Then, uh, oh man, yeah. I think because Ryan, uh, Ryan Ree, I call him Ryan Ree, is that's his name. Yeah. He, I think he got really disgruntled with the business, like big time. Mm-hmm. Right. Seems, which right. is understandable. But, I mean, yeah. I think he took it out on everybody. Yeah. Mm. Man, that was freaking years ago. Uh, I, I really don't have much of an opinion on it. I, I don't think I really honestly care enough to really, uh, to be honest, pay attention to that. Um, but I heard, Re- I heard Ryan Reeves kind of went off on a few people, I guess, and uh, let his voice be known or something like that. Uh, and that's just that. That's a shame, man. You know, like, um, I've always liked Ryan. You know, I thought it was freaking 
big dude, you know what I mean? Very impressive looking. I thought he had a good run in WWE's Ryback, you know. Um, I just don't understand why uh, he became so bitter, I guess, you know, and just throw people under the bus. And who knows what's the truth and what's not, man, to be honest with that, you know, when it comes to stuff like that. Uh, I just... Well, uh, some, of, some, of his, some of his social media posts are really, <laughs> really brutal. What's that? <laughs> You ever see any of his social media posts? They're a little bit out there. Dude, yeah. a little bit. Christ yeah. almighty. Yeah, you know, and like, that's the thing. Like, is he working? Like, is he just, is it an attention thing? Is it to try to get some, you know, eyes maybe, on more followers or something like that? You know? Uh, maybe. maybe. You know what I, mean? I yeah. don't know. But, um, but Pat Buck's always been good to me. I just did a seminar at a school, actually, um, not too long ago, about a month ago. And, you know, he's doing really well. I think he's a producer in AEW, and it's nice right. to see that guy break, you know. He's one of those guys that uh, I, the definition of persistence, you know. Um, he tried, gosh, he tried every gimmick there was, you know, in OVW, I remember. You probably name it, he's been it. But he just kept going, kept going. Now we finally found his niche, and now he's, you know, he's got a job. That's what I'm talking about, like, you know, yeah. there's – there's different spots for different people in the business. He, I mean, he's making a very good living with the business, not necessarily a, a headliner on, on WrestleMania, but he's still making a good, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Guess so, how many bumps he's taking too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No bumps. There you go. No bumps. Right. This is, hey, this is my new gig. No bumps. I've been baby. for four years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, more questions. Always good to go. Good for him, man. Good stuff. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't have much more info on the Pat Buck Rybacks. You know, it. I just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Have we got any other questions? I'm liking these. This is fun. Yeah. I think this one's more for you, Renee. But if Mike, if you can uh, contribute towards it, please were do you, so. Uh, can you elaborate on the Brooke Adams attitude? Were you around Brooke Adams? I, I never met her. No. I never met her. I heard of the name. I'll, I'll yeah, just say it like this. Honor. She was, she was like a 10 out of 10, super hot, but she knew it. I'm just going to leave it like that. Next one. Really? Yeah, she was hot. That's for sure. She was hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Still is. Oh, James yeah. is like, yes, I agree. <laughs> yes. Um, oops. Uh, oh, extreme. Sorry, yeah, Mondo. This, you got on? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. When Fix Stream Bob comes on, I got to put my shades on, okay? Mondo, don't worry. It's a little thing. I don't know it started, by the way. <laughs> what? I must, have, I must have not been on the episode when this gimmick started. No, you weren't. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back. Uh, this is a question he asks all the time. It's my favorite question. It's great to hear from Mike Mondo, one of the great wrestling cheerleaders. What do you think of the back rake as a finisher? See you in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> See you all the time. <laughs> As long as there's a good audible to it, you know what I mean? Like, I want to like see a the slap. slap, you know, like the, right. and the sash, you know, as long yeah. as you get a good sash in there when you go down, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll lay down for a back break any day of the week, twice on Sunday. How about that? I mean, if it's a good, <laughs> like you said, a good with the back slap and the body language and the cell into like maybe like a small package, I could see it. Absolutely, you know, right? Freaking or one to the break, one to the back, one to the mean? front. Turn one eighty, turn around, whoop, roll them right up. Yeah. you know, one, two, three. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Book uh, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what a rib. <laughs> uh, Drew Larry show. Uh, the Eddie tribute show was in Minneapolis. I uh, love the show. Yeah. Happy holiday. All right. Thank you for uh, confirming that. There we go. Oh, okay. Was it? I thought you were right. I thought it was Indianapolis. I didn't know. No. Yeah, I think did they? Oh. Mm. Yeah, because I remember Johnny wanting me to go to TV the next day because I went to Raw. It was a SmackDown taping. SmackDown yeah. was in Indianapolis. Mm. Oh no, 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 you're right. Yeah, yeah, that was the last taping that Eddie did was the Indianapolis. Then the next oh. week they were in Minneapolis. Oh, really? That's oh. okay. Okay. I think so. But dude, it's it's hard to remember, right? All the bumps you take and all the head trauma. Yes, I. Yeah, I mean, I barely have a hard time remembering what I did a couple days ago. You know what I mean? We're, yeah. we're, we're trying to go back years now. <laughs> yeah, Fifteen years ago, yeah. Yes. Uh, the champ. Uh, why wasn't the Spirit Squad in the SmackDown v Raw 2007 game? Oh, that's a good question. Um, bullshit, honestly, man, because they, man, I heard this. Um, I heard this. Is it 
true or not, I don't know, but I think it is. There was five of us, and there's a lot of money to be paid. When uh, I mean, Renee, I'm sure those royalty checks, you know what I'm saying, with the, the video You're games. Nice. I don't nice. know if it is what it is now, but back in the, you know, when at least I, God, it was like, I think it was like 30 grand or something. I don't know. It was a lot. It was a lot of money. But uh, I heard that it was, they can't, there was only X amount of slots there. There was five of us. They, they couldn't just put two or three of us in there. It had to be the group of five. And instead of putting us in there, they put Charlie Haas and Umaga in there. Um, and uh, yeah, we missed the boat on that, which is weird because we debuted way before Umaga. You know, uh, so I think it was a, a business money thing, you know, paying us out like that. So I, I could be totally wrong, you know. That's now you, you got action figures, right? I got action figure, yep. Mm -hmm. Well, was it individual or was it the whole group together or is it? Um, Ken, Kenny was by himself. Uh, I was with Big Show. Uh, Ziggler was by himself. Uh, Mitch was paired off with somebody. I, I don't know who, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Right, Tori Wilson. <laughs> Is there a date? Let's, let's, let's talk about Mitch for a second. Okay, you know? let's talk about him. Fuck let's it. talk about him. Like, yeah. uh, gosh, I haven't talked to that guy in years. You know, I think he hit me up on Instagram once. Apparently, um, I guess okay, he's born whoa, in whoa, Christian whoa. now. You told, right? me, you told me he was a, like a, a, a Buddhist monk last time we talked. Yeah, he really... I guess, yeah, he flipped the switch. So I guess that's what he's doing now, you know? But you, sure? um, you, but, right? <laughs> but you know, after we done the episode with you and Jeter, some people was uh, uh, tagging his account or his wife's account saying it was great to hear your stories about him. Yeah. And his wife said on Instagram, yeah, it's a shame that they didn't invite Mitch to be part of the show. Man, it's just too bad, I guess. <laughs> no, actually, oh, man, I don't want to heal out on that. I mean, it was, uh, you know, he was, uh, he had a good heart. He just, um, just didn't make smart moves. You know, he just didn't use his brain. You know what I mean? Common sense. He lacked common sense when we were on the road and stuff. And, uh, you know, when we were in Johnny Ace's office every third week, you know, getting a talking to, or <laughs> when we're, uh, get this, when we're, um, sitting in the stands before a show with Arn Anderson getting a locker room etiquette, you know, speech, you know, and it's just like, man, dude, like I was, you know, this is stuff I learned like in my first week of wrestling school, you know what I mean? It's a little embarrassing, you know, Yeah. but, um, you know, I mean, heck, I mean, he, he had a hell of a break. He's, he's a guy that really didn't have much experience, you know, it just comes walking in onto the TV scene in a faction, getting pushed to the main events, saying, here, here, become the world tag team champion, have some action figures, make some good money, work the main events, travel the world, you know, wrestle Ric Flair one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and uh, it's, uh, hey, you know, good for, uh, good for Mitch, you know. <laughs> but what bugged me about him sometimes is that, you know, he'd jump on the bandwagon sometimes, like when, um, you know, the locker room could be the locker room and the boys can be the boys, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, he would <laughs> kind of like, not turn against you, but be like, hey, man, like, you're my tag partner. And you're like, you know, stick up for me here a little bit. You know what I mean? Instead of joining, don't don't uh, don't join the train, so to speak. You know what I mean? And uh, add fuel to the fire. Um, and he did that. And I wanted to just, you know. Smack the shit out of him, yeah. Yeah. So that's why I, sometimes I don't feel bad saying those things today, you know, just because right. sometimes, you know, uh, there was some. Because, I mean, you you put in your time. You're You're the veteran compared to him. You're the yeah, you're senior, right? yeah, you know, and uh, I'm trying to make you better and I'm trying to teach you and I'm actually, you know, I'm trying to, uh, you know, we're in this here together and I want to make you the best version of Mitch that you can possibly be, you know what I mean? But, you know, when you're more interested in, you know, chasing girls or, you know, um, getting over with the boys, you know what I mean? Instead of thinking, hey, man, we got freaking business to freaking accomplish and, you know, we need to get your shit straight. You know, let's let's get in the ring before the house shows and work on your fundamentals and work on your your craft and everything like that. So when the opportunity does arise, when you have to get in the ring, because eventually you will have to get in the ring, because he had like an ACL injury for you know a long time and he was mostly on the outside for half of our run. You know, but eventually came time to get in the ring and you know, like Rip says, then the bell rings. <laughs> then the bell rings. That's yeah. right. Let's yeah. get to these super chats, man. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Raw culture. 
Let's get it up. Uh, here we go. Uh, any wrestling conspiracies Mondo entertains? Yeah. Uh, uh, break down that question for me. Uh, like, uh, what do you, what do you like mean? Wrestling by that? conspiracies, <laughs> like, uh, like yeah. for example, the two Ultimate Warriors. That was like a conspiracy for many years, right? Oh, okay. But in reality, let's shoot it straight. Warrior got <laughs> okay. off the gas. He quit dyeing his hair. Yeah. Lost a bunch of weight. That's why it was <laughs> different. I think he got a tattoo. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, wrestling conspiracies. Hmm. Hmm. Gosh, I feel boring right now. Um, wrestling conspiracy. Oh, man. Yeah, the warrior. I mean, that's a good one too. I I thought when I was a kid, like there could have been two Ultimate Warriors. Let's go. Uh, right. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I, I got one for you. Give Montreal. Me one. Yeah, give me one. Work or shoot. What's that? Montreal. Montreal screw job, work or shoot? Good oh, man. Uh I'm gonna say it was a shoot if I have to really give an answer. You know what I mean? But it's just kind of weird with the whole wrestling with shadows and the ca cameras being in the right place at the right time. Like talk about timing, you know what I mean? So that makes me want to doubt it a little bit, you know. Um Brett wearing a wire into Vince's like, office. That's what I mean. Like, what are the chances? That's like, the <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the cameras right. happen to be there. <laughs> right. That that's just that's just my thinking. It was, you know what I mean. Right. But it's so. Yeah. I mean, if it is a work, it's definitely the greatest work in the history of pro wrestling. That's why that's they keep sure. bringing it up. They keep reminding people. That's like I think that's I thought I think it's a work. But yeah. That's Brett's like. Yeah, that's his, not not claim to fame, but that's like his his fucking because look what happened, man. Yeah, he went to WCW, made millions of dollars guaranteed, and then it changed Vince McMahon's business around because it made Vince the greatest heel ever. And who made who made Austin? It was Brett WrestleMania 13 in that match. Yep, yep. We got him the sharpshooter with the fucking ging ging and the fucking the juice, man. Oh, so Brett, great. in my opinion, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, yeah. Brett. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. He was my favorite wrestler growing up. You know, he's the reason why Likewise. I want to be a wrestler. Mine too. So. It is. Yeah. All right, let's do the super chats. Yep. Uh, Pokemon Trail thoughts on WXW Germany. Oh, you were over there, Mondo. Did oh, you go that? over there? Oh, you broke up there. WXW in Germany for uh, Felix. Oh yeah, man. Hell yeah. Uh, Do you ever work for them, Renee? I did. Uh... <laughs> I did an afternoon show one time years ago. There was a double yeah. shot. It was actual wrestling. Then they had the death because he did the death match stuff early on, right? Right, he, right. I, just, okay. I think they went more actual, like indirect afterwards. But you work with David Starr. I thought he was a hell of a talent. Uh, I just think we're himself in quite a pickle. No, I work with David Starr for XWA in. Uh, somewhere on the east coast here um in, in wxw in germany i did a tag team tournament with uh kenny um unfortunately I, I don't remember we had two rounds we made it to the semifinals. uh i don't I unfortunately don't remember the names that i worked with but um dude the crowd was amazing i yeah. love germany uh, the germany the fans there awesome dude i mean they were like you you know you felt it you know what I'm saying? Like, I had goosebumps, you know what I mean? Like, it was just, like, that uh, passion, you know? And um, yeah. just, um, yeah, I just, it was a great experience, man. I, I would love to, uh, love to go back, obviously. You know, um, I know they do, like, a tag tournament every year. They do a singles tournament every year. Um, but speaking of David Starr, dude, I thought he was, yeah, a great, freaking great talent, man, you know? Um, yeah. I got to work with him, um like I said, here on the East Coast, and uh, I said, let's go out there, and, you know, we didn't really, like, call much in the back, you know, and it was a little bit out of his element, I remember, you know, but he uh, he took a lot away from that, you know, and I remember him speaking, you know, uh, I heard him say that he, he learned a lot from that match, so I'm happy I got to help him out there, you know, yeah. but, uh, yeah, yeah, good talent, man. Is he, he still wrestling? Out. No, I think he, uh, he got caught up in that Me Too movement. Yep. Oh, some oh, accusations okay. arose and 
Uh, I haven't uh, seen him since. I haven't That's seen him since. Man. You know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, uh, w- Back w- to the yeah, WXW. Good, 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 fond memories. Absolutely. Okay. Get to the super chats. Uh, yeah, a few more coming actually. Uh, Potato supremacist. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> Any stories about Fisserette Nielsen? <laughs> oh, I love Big Fis. I miss that guy. Yeah. Dude, oh, that, man. There's uh, a story on here when I'm in Tokyo. He uh, we got a little too drunk, and he he wanted to. Uh, um, anyway, teabag me. But do you have any stories like that? <laughs> Not like that. I just remember. Uh... <laughs> oh man, big Vis. No man, I I remember. Man, he was a lot of. We we actually wrestled him quite a bit when we were doing the the loops, the house shows, and stuff like that. And uh, here's a, a good story for you. So I remember. Um, so our spear squad pants, right? They were buttoned on the sides. You know what I mean? But they were sewn. Now, this is just before I became an official member. They were trying me out on the road, and Kenny was wrestling, you know, and I was just kind of Kenny's manager. But um, <laughs> my pants weren't sewn up yet, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what's coming next, you know? And yeah. So I'm on the outside, and Kenny's doing his deal, you know, or whatever, and the spot comes where I got to get Beald in the ring, you know? And then, of course, he's going to do the whole the, the Humpty Dumpty thing that he does. Well, as he builds me in the ring, my pants go. Whoosh, and I'm like, oh, shoot, this is this is horrible. You know, here I am freaking trying to try out for the job to get the spot. You know what I mean? And my pants come undone. What is Big Vis? No, he doesn't salvage or fix the situation. No, no, he doesn't do that. He takes my pants and he goes. Whoosh, and off my pants completely come on. Nothing in my tidy whities in front of, uh, you know, thousands of people. Luckily, it was a house show. It wasn't TV. So what does he proceed to do? He proceeds to not only uh, put Kenny there. I, don't, I was on the bottom. He puts Kenny on top of me. And then Big Vist does the big sandwich and ends up doing the deal on both of us. And, oh, the Visagra? Where he yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I, I don't think we even got to the finish i think i just ran out of the ring and kenny just freaking <laughs> covered me up like this you know and it was just like we just ran and we'll, we'll, we'll explain ourselves later <laughs> yeah the boys oh, got a good pop out of that though you know <laughs> okay but um now big fist man nothing but nice things to say about him man great great dude uh i miss the guy a lot you know hey mondo that's what i remember always you know him always yeah. saying <laughs> always laid back and chill Yep, yep. Okay, next question. Yeah, uh, thank you, Ian, from Rock Culture. Uh, Rock Culture. <laughs> Rock Culture. Thanks, guys. Great podcast. Thank you, Rock Culture. And oh, yeah. uh, question here, Dark Knight Returns. Uh, you guys ever hear the theories? Maybe Benoit and Eddie were more than friends. Benoit crying in Eddie's bed, smelling his pillow, crying in Eddie's gym. What? Ah. Uh. Like no. they were lovers? No. 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 Sorry, I think that's Sorry. what I was trying to imply, but I've never heard that. I just heard they've no. always been, been best friends. I was like, brothers. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, when you're in this business and you travel the world together, because I think they were they were definitely in Japan a lot together. They were, I think, Mexico together. Uh, WWE, WCW. Like, it's you become family. Like, you become... You're around these guys more than your own family. And True. when you find someone you can confide in that's not going to stab you in the back and shit, because there's a lot that happens, you know. Absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Probably count the amount of friends you really make in this business on one hand, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, shit ton of acquaintances, but I mean, as far as friends go, right? I mean, definitely few and far in between, you know. Yeah. I've made more friends ever since I was outside. You know, I guess um, uh, WWE, you know, um, I guess just, you know, it's not so much the pressure, I guess, or the, the money involved, you know, and you can actually meet people and see their real personalities that they don't like have their guard up all the time. You know what I mean? Um, right. I don't know. You, uh, especially like when I go to conventions and stuff, it's like, geez, like you're a completely different person. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Good to meet you. Good to see you again, you know, and um, yeah. it's cool. And I guess that's just the nature of the beast. It's a very high, stressful atmosphere, you know, and um, I'm sure, Renee, you know, there's a big difference between, 
the amount of money you make from being in the first match in the card and being the last match of the card, you know, and everyone's always gunning for that, that spot, that position, you know, and, um, it's just, um, and there's a lot of downtime, you know, what do you do with that downtime? You know, it's just, you know, just look for things to, uh, you know, freaking kill time and stuff like that. But it's, it's good to actually meet some like real, like friends and stuff outside <laughs> there and, I have a good time whenever I do the convention. It's just it's like one big reunion, you know. <laughs> oh, do you still do those? What's that? You still do the conventions? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got booked on one. Uh, well, I just got an offer to go to Canada for one. Uh, that, I think that's a Comic Con. But I got one I'm doing in. Uh, I forgot the name of it, but I'm going to Baltimore in uh, March. So. Oh, good. Yeah, man. Yeah, I like them. They're fun. Mm -hmm. You know, they're cool. Uh, another question here from Eddie G. Uh, craziest fan interaction. I remember you did a show in Queens, New York, and some guy who probably couldn't bend over to tie his shoe was ready to fight you. Is that true? Oh, please tell me the story. Uh, I don't remember getting into a fight, to be honest, in Queens. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't remember. Again, maybe I got hit in the head and I don't know. I, I don't remember getting into a fight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure, I, does he have the right squad member? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, um, no, but I guess the craziest fan um, interaction. I remember someone uh, came across the fan where they wanted me to sign their baby's forehead. And this was like an infant. And I just couldn't do it, man. I just was like, with all due respect, you know, I, I'll sign an autograph. I'll do whatever. But I'm not going to sign, to, you know, uh, your, your baby's forehead who's just an infant it's just kind of weird and not really my deal <laughs> you know what i mean right, right. but yeah that's probably the craziest fan interaction that was overseas somewhere i remember uh i want to say it was in ireland actually yeah mm. they want you to find their baby's head baby's forehead <laughs> baby's forehead yeah wow. yeah mm -hmm. very strange yeah, that's one thing i don't feel comfortable signing skin i'll sign a shirt or whatever yeah but... What was the weirdest thing anyone's asked you to sign, Renee? If I could ask. Yeah. I mean, I mean for me, that was pretty weird on, on my end, you know. Um, or a know. woman's breast. That happened a few times. Yeah. That's yeah, it's commonplace. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for a second, you want to know if they're like ribbing you or not, you know? It's like, okay, you really. Right. Okay. If I do this, it's <laughs> Is there some crazy ex-husband going to come chase me when I get yeah. out of here? You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to get jumped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Bam. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, uh, another one here. Hey, guys. Any stories about Trevor Murdoch? Seemed like a good dude, and he's killing it over in NWA right now. NWA, man. Like, have you ever looked into going there, Mondo? I think that would fit you fit in perfect there. Yeah, you know, um, I guess I can let the cat out of the bag now, but this was like uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, Nick Aldis actually called me, and um, he had wanted to know if I wanted to come in, and um, actually the role was to be a manager. And uh, I didn't know who I was going to be working with or anything like that, but he just wanted to get my uh, – if I wanted to do it or not. And I said, yeah, sure, absolutely, I'm interested, you know, Um but we didn't talk money. We didn't talk a time or a date, like when it's going to happen. Just that typical wrestling stuff, you know. Um, but apparently he got Billy Corgan's approval on it. And I'm just waiting, you know, for the phone call. And I, I just never just never called You're me. Right. Mick, Mick, Mickey even texted me. And it's like, hey, my, uh, my husband wants to talk to you, you know, about coming to NWA. And I was like, okay, this is got, maybe this is legit then, you know. Mickey's re reaching out to me, you know. But uh, I never heard from Nick any uh, after that. But uh well, like, they don't okay. run very often, right? They only have like three or four tapings a year or something like that. Yeah, they don't run much. I don't think you know. Um, it's not like a steady like territory, right? Like they don't do house shows, no, TV, no. TV or nothing like that. Right? I think like they every three months like the they shows. might they might mm. shoot like a weekend worth of television or YouTube. I don't think they have TV. I think it's just a YouTube channel. Is that what it is? Okay. Um, yeah. I think they're on Fight TV. Oh, are they? I think so. I think they've got something on YouTube. I think you have to pay a subscription to Fight TV to watch it. I might be wrong, but oh, yeah. it, I think they are behind a paywall. I might be wrong, though. Mm. Right. Well, 
I think the other part of the question was Trevor Murdoch. Did you spend a lot of time with Trevor? I had his dark match that got him hired. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we're because uh, he's from uh, Missouri, right? Mm, with Trevor Murdoch, he did. Yeah, yeah. He came in for a double shot. He worked uh, Monday, worked with Conway, and mm -hmm. then on the Tuesday, worked with me. And then nice. uh, Johnny came. So hey, Renee, how, how is he? <laughs> I said he's very good. Was good. Yeah. Was good. I was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man, that's hard. funny. Did you have any interactions with him? Um, we, we were on the Raw brand together, you know, when him and Lance were a tag team. Uh, unfortunately, we never crossed paths in the ring much. I would have loved to have worked with him and Lance. Um, I yeah. thought that would have been really cool. Um, I wrote, I rode with uh, Lance and Trevor a few times. Um, that's really just my extent of that relationship with them. It's always been nice and really cool to me, you know. Yeah. But that's really been it. Never uh, really had much uh, interaction other than that. Yeah. Jesus Christ, all these questions, and you, like, didn't interact with anybody, Mondo. Come on, you got to be more entertaining. I got to be more what? You got to be more entertaining. Come on, just make shit up. Yeah, I mean, Chris, we got drunk one night at the bar, and, you know. Oh, man, you're saying I'm a shitty interview? Hey, damn it. No, I'm not going to get my third round on here. <laughs> all right, here's the one. Why didn't the entire Spirit Squad return in 2016? Um, They tried. Um, but they couldn't find Mitch. Uh, he was MIA. Uh, and Johnny Jeter, um, Johnny Jeter got offered, but uh, he actually has a, a good job and everything like that. And he has a wife and he just recently had a kid and everything. So he's in a different situation as me and Kenny were at the time. So that's the cliff notes of that. So uh, pretty much it was just me and Kenny that was available and uh, we went to TV and did it. Yep. Speaking of Kenny, uh, has he just left WWE? No, he's uh, if he left, I didn't know about it. Uh, he's uh, he, he's a producer there, and uh, he also um, does the extra talent for uh, for TVs as well. Uh, him and Gabe Sapolsky do that. So uh, we actually just had Gabe down at my wrestling school. It was nice to see him again and uh, scout talent and uh, check out the school and everything like that. So, um, yeah, hopefully uh, I, I asked Kenny if he can come down at some point. And he said he'd be happy to check out the guys at some point. And that'd be great. You know, I haven't seen him in forever, too, so it'd be nice to catch up. But I heard, yeah, I heard he wasn't there anymore either. Really? Yeah. Is this, like, is this recent? Like recent? Because uh, I, yeah. I would we keep in touch, like we text. Yeah, Renee mentioned it Monday, didn't you, Renee? Really? Yeah, someone told me that he wasn't. I gotta look he into wasn't that there anymore. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. no, maybe shoot no, him a text. I didn't know. hear anything about that. Yeah, shoot. I yeah. I just wished him a Merry Christmas, and I would think that he would have said something to me, you know. But no, uh, I don't know. All right, right. Uh, you mentioned Gabe Sapolsky. Uh, Here's one ties into it. Mike, how was your time in RRH? Any stories? Um, yeah, o overall, I um, had a good time there. I thought I got to uh, branch out of the Spirit Squad and become my own uh, identity, you know. Uh, when I first arrived there, it was a little tough uh, with, with the guys a little bit, you know. Um, I don't think they knew what to, to think of me. I was kind of uh, brought in by, by Jim, you know, um, pretty much, and he was booking the show. And, um, you know, it's, it's not like I, I went there and was pushed to the moon, you know what I mean, and became world champion overnight. You know, I, I did jobs. You know, I put over Adam Cole. I put over Kevin Steen. I put over Eddie Edwards. I put over Davey Richards. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I just, uh, I don't know. If it was like I was just the WWE guy coming in to, like, their world a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Yeah. Um, so it, like... But there, and there were some guys that were like nice to me, like Mike Bennett was really nice to me. Uh, T.J. Perkins was really kind to me, you know. Um, uh, the, the Bucks were really nice. Um, but yeah, just some guys just, um, you know. I remember, uh, you know, <laughs> I remember was put all these guys over, you know. Then finally, it was coming time for my push, you know what I mean? And um, you know, it's just sometimes I felt like they were reluctant to kind of like put me over or whatever like that you know we're, we're going over the match like i picked an <laughs> idea for a finish and everything and you know uh, i got the approval from from cornet and he's like yeah that's great do it you know so when i pitched to the guys because they're like oh, no that's not that that's what was suggested you know and it's just like man come on man like you know just freaking do the damn finish 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it makes sense. It puts over the gimmick. Let's just freaking rock and roll. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah. as time went on, went on <laughs> they, they realized, you know, I'm not this malicious freaking bad dude. You know, things got more comfortable for me, you know, and, and this was my first time outside that WWE element too. So it was, everything was new for me too. You know what I mean? But um, overall, it was it was good. Like, I had good times, and I got to do a lot of training things at the ROH school in Pennsylvania with Delirious. And um, yeah, so again, that trainer, you know, identity kind of followed me around, even with Ring of Honor. You know what I mean? So I've always had that reputation, not just as a wrestler, but as a trainer. But uh, mm. yeah, I had some great matches there and worked a lot of great talent. Can't take away anything from that. Okay. Cool. Uh, here's a great one that Renee, you'll like to talk about this as well. Uh, Dr. Guerrera. Um, we have Dr. Hoovy, by the way, Mike. He's our gimmick. Um, Mondo, <laughs> thoughts on Pat O'Connor fee Buddy Rogers. Why do many wrestlers consider that the best match ever? Thanks for all you've done in the ring. Oh, very welcome. Oh, man, I love. Honestly, like when I want to just watch wrestling as a fan and just kind of escape thinking of it from like a worker standpoint, you know, I like to go back to my black and white wrestling. You know, I love to watch the Reds. I love to watch Buddy Rogers, Pat O'Connor, um, gosh, Haystacks, Calhoun. Um, just, and the reason why that match, I think, uh, they consider it, I don't know about maybe the best match ever, but they obviously consider it a great match. It's just the realism and the believability, you know, just watch how they tie up at the very beginning and how it's like two bulls colliding. Nobody, nobody ties up like that. And I try to emulate that to my class. Like, look, this is how it's supposed to be done. You know, it's the intent behind grabbing each hole that they don't just like go into it. It's just how they, the, the finesse and, and just the, the art, it's just unmatched and unparalleled. And you can and people can't, in my opinion, just don't emulate that today. And it just looks like a legit contest with two guys trying to get the better of each other. And it just, it's just, it's believable. It's real. You know, it suspends my disbelief as a fan. And I think that's because, and that's, I think, one of the reasons why it stands out as one of the greatest matches ever is because, uh, you know, um, it's, uh, they, they, they work with emotion, you know, and that's what this business is based on. It's based on, it's an emotion-based business. And they make you feel a certain way at the right time, at the right place, you know, and those two guys are two of the best, you know, and um, that's why I feel like it's one of the greatest matches ever. And uh, I take pieces of clips of that match all the time and show it to my my class, you know, because I think it's a great example of how how it should be done. Well put there, Mondo. Uh, Professional, baby, professional. Uh, uh, got a couple here from Dale. Same question. Uh, any memories from working with DX? Yeah, we had a ball. We had a great time, especially on house shows. You know, um, I, I mean, I learned so much. I've worked out of, honestly, there's ways to make yourself stand out uh, working in a main event as opposed to an opening match. Working with Hunter and Sean really taught me uh, how to work like a main event guy, you know, like a high profile top talent. Um, I also, that's when it clicked for me that you really don't have to do much to them at all because they're just so over and the gimmick is so over, you know, in fact, we probably beat up Shawn Michaels too much. <laughs> You're looking back on it. You know, we could have done way less and gotten away with a lot more, you know, just working our character, working our gimmick and doing a lot less physicality, you know, but, um, that's just hindsight looking back. Um, yeah, I mean, it was great. You know, um, damn, we just. We did a bunch of silly stuff on the house. And that's silly, but like house shows and like we had fun. I mean, I remember there was this one thing like a squad member would start off. They do a spot. I charge. I get chick hand over the top rope, you know, or another pretty much they do another spot. I get chick hand over the top rope, you know, and another thing I get over the top rope. You get the pattern. Right. And then finally, you know, here I come. I wait, 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 you know, take my own singlet. I throw myself over the top rope. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like stuff like that, you know, um, and we just, uh, Sean was like, want to have some, you know, want to have some fun today, boys? And it's like, yeah, man, let's go out and have some fun. And that's, what, that's you know, we just did that. And at the end of the day, they just wanted to see the highlight reel. You know what I mean? And if you know the highlight reel, when it comes to Hunter, duck one, high knee, shoot reverse, face crusher, boom, spine buster, big pose, get the pedigree in, Sean, shoot reverse, forearm, nip up, atomic, punch, slam, 
elbow, chin music. And as long as I get that, the people are happy. It doesn't matter what you do prior. At the end of the day, you did your match. So there you go. There you go. Still got the match down on my head after all these years. Yeah, right. Uh, yep. Here's a fun question. Uh, thank you, Eagles. Uh, any gimmick ideas uh, you never got to play out? A heel magician character, marvelous Mike Mondo, could have been the ticket to Mega Stardom. <laughs> <laughs> Where do people come up with this stuff? That's fantastic. Uh, oh man, I feel like Al Snow is on the uh, on the other end right. of that. that. Yeah, no. Um, That's your gimmick for 2023. There, is, there was an idea for me that never happened, but apparently Vince always wanted a Mighty Mouse character. I don't know if you yes. heard of this. Have you heard about the yes. Mighty Mouse character? I've heard he's got an obsession with it because I think he wanted Adrian Neville, Pac to also be it as well. Yeah. Guess who the original guy for that idea was? This guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, Bruce Pritchard came down to FCW, pulled me aside, and was like, uh, you know, Vince has this um, idea. He wants a Mighty Mouse character. And that was like really the extent of what Bruce's pitch to me was. So I was like, okay, so what do I do? Do I study the Mighty Mouse cartoon? Like, what do I do? Like, uh, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, whatever, I'll try to do it, you know? I mean, I can't, at least I can try, you know? Um, so I remember <laughs> I used to be called El Mondo and, uh, for a brief stint in my OVW career and I had the mask and I had the tassels and I had the long tights and very colorful character, you know? Um, so I took that outfit pretty much. And, uh, I, I honestly, I started watching Mighty Mouse cartoons and I'm just like, I don't know how I can translate this cartoon to pro wrestling in the ring. And, uh, you know, I remember I did a couple house shows for FCW, uh, and I just pulled Doc aside, and I was just like, man, I just, I, I'm not feeling this. I, I, I don't know what to do. And he's like, all right, all right, well, we'll go back to the drawing board, you know. And he's like, look, if you just give me direction and tell me what you want and this vision for this character, I can put the pieces to the puzzle and get a, together a little bit. But you're kind of just telling me you want a Mighty Mouse character with no other, you know what I mean? I just need to be led in the direction a little bit more. <laughs> but that's my... Uh, that's my uh, yeah infamous Kate Fabe gimmick idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, got another one here, uh, the champ. Any funny stories from the SummerSlam commercial? Is that the one oh, where man. Batista and Booker got in a fight? Ooh, what happened? Booker and who? Batista. I think it was at a SummerSlam commercial taping. Might have been that year they got into a fight. Oh snap! Um, so you, you didn't yeah. see it all. No, I remember. I remember the fight happening or whatever like that. But I don't think um, I wasn't on the road when that fight happened. I was still in OVW at the time. Were you on the road oh. when that fight happened? No, no, no. I remember hearing about it, but I wasn't there. No. Yeah. yeah. How uh, how did um, your Brown commercial go? That was the question. Oh yeah. Any um, interesting stories? No, we had a lot of laughs. I remember because. We had to do a pyramid, and Kane had to like knock us off the uh, uh, the pyramid, you know. And we did that like ten or twelve times. So we were kind of <laughs> eventually get some kicks and get some laughs out of it. But uh, I got a really cool pair of uh, bossy, I think that's how you say it, headphones. Uh, I remember that. That was pretty cool. Um, you know, it was fun. It kind of felt like a vacation, man. It was like it was like a mansion, and we were in this beautiful backyard, and. It's kind of like surreal, you know. It's just like, damn, am I like really here right now? This is pretty cool, you know. Um, but no, nothing really. We just a lot of downtime, hurry up and wait, you know, and to do our little skit with the pyramid. And uh, yeah, that was really it, man. Yeah, I don't really have much stories on that. Mm. I think we're in California for that. California. Hey, I want to ask you: Do you still do the motion cap? Um, I. Was the last time I was there was about four months ago, but it wasn't as an actor. It was as a stunt coordinator. Um, so instead of taking the bumps, um, whenever they needed a wrestling scene, uh, I was the guy to uh, come up with this, the wrestling scenario for the actors to uh, then go ahead and um, 
you know, bring to life or whatever like that. So I thought that was fun and it was really cool wow. because for honestly, for 10, 12 years, I was doing all the acting. I was doing the, the moves. I was doing the cut scenes. I was doing the entrances. Uh, I was doing the victory scenes, you know, um, all the physical work pretty much. So this time I was on the other end of it and, and uh, they brought me in to do that. And um, from what I know, they, they said I did well and that whenever the opportunity presents itself to, when they need a, a stunt coordinator, they're going to bring me back. So I hope I hope that happens because I had a lot of fun, and uh, uh, there was zero bumps, so that was cool. <laughs> yes, and I, got to, and I got to spend time in uh, California again, which was nice. So I made uh, sure to hit up In and Out, which is my favorite fast food. Whenever I'm there, oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Correct me, if, correct me if I'm wrong. The guy who does <laughs> the uh, the motion cap now, it's uh, L.A. Knight, isn't it? L.A. Knight, yeah. Um, Max from, Dupree. Uh, Lady Frost was there. Um, right. Who else? Yeah, L.A. Knight. Uh, a lot of guys I, I never, honestly never heard of, you know, but I guess they've been around wrestling for a while. A lot of local talent because I guess sometimes they're, you know, with the budget and everything, we're flying people in and stuff. Um, oh, Kenny King was there. That was cool. Got to see him again. Oh, Kenny King. Nice guy. Yeah. Mm, yep. Hell yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, it was cool. It was good, it's a good experience. I hope to go back. Yeah. Renee, LA Knight is the guy who had the Max Dupree character, and they've dropped that gimmick now. Yeah. Oh. It was him. Um, yeah, that's the, uh, he was in TNA too, wasn't he, for a little bit, for a while? Yeah, uh, Eli Drake. Eli Drake. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. I did mocap with him. Yes. Yeah. He's a great talker, man. He knows how to, oh, yeah. He can talk. You know, yeah, I was can. definitely impressed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He looks like Cliff right. Compton to me. <laughs> looks like Cliff Compton. He looks like Cliff Compton to me. That's yeah. why you know, that's right. That my opinion. Yeah, I always thought yeah. that. Mike Taylor would. Uh, he wouldn't agree with me, but I was like, no, he looks like Cliff Compton. <laughs> I actually sent him a message today to invite him to the show. By the way, there we go. Cool. No, that'd be cool. Uh, Cliff Compton. Oh, Cliff. Yeah. So, Cliff, if you're watching, <laughs> so um, you're welcome to come on the show. Uh, Mike, hey Mike, what are your thoughts on Bobby Lashley? Jacked. Um, no, Bobby, uh, I spent a lot of time with Bobby in OVW. Um, I was his manager for a while when I was the drill sergeant, uh, a spinoff of Sergeant Danny Davis. And um, yeah, it was, uh, B- Bobby was in Bowling Services with me. I was his manager for a long time. I remember when him and Ziggler came down for their tryout. I was with Lance Storm helping train uh, Bobby and Ziggler. Um, you know, kind of mostly being uh, a bump bump guy, pretty much. But uh, I remember playing a hand and helping him out. Um, yeah, I, know, I love Bobby, man. Super nice guy, and man, is he you know, like he's strong. Like I remember we being gorilla position, and Bobby's getting warmed up, and you know he's doing like the punches to me, but like he's not even trying. And I'm like, dude, like, like easy, bro. <laughs> like you're freaking hurting me, man. Like, and he's not even like. I feel sorry for whoever he faced in the UFC ring, you know. Oh, I'm like, God, man, that guy coming full blast at you. Holy cow, freaking take your freaking face off. You know what I mean? Um, but, um, you know, he's really evolved. Um, I, I've seen stuff from Bobby today on TV, and, you know, he's has some great matches, and I think he's got it as far as that's concerned. You know, uh, his promo skills have gotten a lot better since when they first started, you know. Um, and he's always he's always been really nice and cordial to me. So that's, uh, yeah. And a good training partner, too, in the gym. Oh, he'll help you out there too. Um, <laughs> uh, thoughts on the Sigler and Shawn Michaels comparisons? Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, I guess there's some comparisons there. Um, I don't really have a comment on that. I guess it is what it is. Um, I guess, I guess he does a super kick. Shawn Michaels does a super kick, right? So I guess uh, you're gonna, comp- you know, I guess the the look, I guess a little bit, you know. Um, yeah. I don't know, Renee. What do you think about that? I, I'm kind of stumped on that one. I don't really have a comment on that. I don't want to sound like an asshole, but I have not watched uh, Nikki Nemeth wrestle since the Spirit Squad days. No, okay. no, I hear you, man. Yeah, yeah. So I can't tell. Um, yeah. And it's not like being bitter. I, like, I just don't watch the show at all. No, I hear you, man. Yeah. No, yeah. definitely. I feel <laughs> you. It's, uh, I'd like to watch it a little bit more. But again, there's not enough time in the day sometimes. You know, I got stuff going on. and But I try to uh, keep up with my buddies as best I can sometimes. I watch, Twitter. 
<laughs> I watch I watch wrestling when I'm on the show. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We got uh, another one here. Yep. Yes. Guy, did Elijah Beck really turn down the Spirit Squad? Yes. Yes, he did. And uh, fortunately for him, he made the right move because I think he had a really good and uh, uh, luxurious career going forward after that. You know, um, he took a chance. He, he bet on himself. And um, I want to say it worked out for him. You know, he had a great run as, as the Pope, you know, uh, TNA. You know, he, he had a good run in WWE, you know, the ECW brand. Um, he was working like, the, I want to say the main events with Punk, Um uh, gosh, who else uh, was on top there at the time? But anyway, he was always in the mix, you know. And um, you know, Elijah turned out to be a hell of a hand, a great worker, a great talker, you know. Um, so uh, good for Elijah, man. You know, some people, you know, that that's a ballsy move to turn down an idea like that. Sometimes, you know, especially if he knows he's gonna get pushed to the moon, and you know, you know, you're gonna make a lot of money, you know. But uh, he um, he decided to uh, turn it down, but. You know, it worked out for him in the end. So, good I for see, Elijah, my brother. He's hmm? still wrestling as the Pope in NWA, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's still oh. going, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, and Elijah was a guy when I, he he came from the OVW trial camp when I was there, and he didn't have any experience. So I've seen this guy grow from not knowing anything how to tie up to now seeing what he knows now. It's it's quite the you know, quite the evolution. You know, of Elijah Burke. So it's. He's turned out to be really good. The Pope. The Pope. Who got his, who got my his spot then when he turned it down? Uh -huh. So when the Pope turned it down, who ended up getting his spot? Is that me. Mitch? Was it you? Yeah. That's when wow. they brought me on the road. And um, and then Jeter came after me because they wanted five guys. Yep. Not the food, but five guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, five guys burgers. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Bad what joke. do you think of Whataburger <laughs> down in Texas? What's that? Whataburger. You know, Whataburger's Whataburger. good. That's where they put the mustard on the burgers. Yeah, it's good. I like Whataburger. I haven't had a good Whataburger in forever, man. That was the first time I experienced mustard on a burger. I was like, wow, this is pretty good. I like it. They got good shakes, too. Yeah. You never had mustard <laughs> on a burger? Like, what the freak? <laughs> it's like, Mongo, you're losing it, man. <laughs> I'm getting hungry, man. Okay, let's go through these super chats. Yeah, uh, this room has been so you know mentioned many times on the show. Um, have you seen the Purple Sky Eleven series about the Chris Benoit murders? Nancy texted Chris a month before about him cheating on her with Michelle McCall. That's been brought up a few times, like from the fans on this channel. Really? Like him and Michelle McCall. I've noticed it. it's been brought up quite a few times. Really? Really? Yeah. I never heard about it till the fans started mentioning it on the podcast. Yeah, you got me, man. I never heard, I never of, that. heard of that either. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know how to respond to that. See, that, that. That would go into the conspiracies, right? Conspiracies. There you Conspiracy. go. Yes. Yeah, I, I never heard that. I just <laughs> saw, like, Michelle, like, all over Taker from like the get go. Yeah. Yeah, I see yeah. that. Yeah. But not Benoit. Apparently, um, they started out playing football. And that was it. Yeah. So Michelle threw a football and fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> really? that's, what, that's what he said. <laughs> oh, wow. In, okay. in an interview, I heard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, must say, I am behind the magician ma marvelous Mike Mondo gimmick. Could round out the gimmick with a magician's assistant valet. Hell yeah. If it's money, it's money. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> marvelous um, oh, magician, marvelous. So Triple M. So I can take, kind of take a spin off of like Triple H a little bit, you know? And yeah, he'll be all right with that. Triple M. I'll, I'll propose the idea to him. I'm sure he'll go for it. <laughs> Who would you have as your assistant, Serena Deep? Who is that? Who would you have as your assistant, Serena Deep? Yes, absolutely. She can be my <laughs> assistant. Yes. <laughs> we'll get another run together. <laughs> uh, you mentioned it a minute ago, but any uh, mocap stories? Oh, yeah, mocap. Gosh, uh, man. Well, 
we always had a great time. We always had a ball, you know. Um, I remember when I was in L.A., we'd always go to this place called Big Wangs, and they just had the best wings in town, you know, good music, beer, food. And uh, this was when I was in my 20s, so we would just stay out, gosh, to like 3 or 4 in the morning. And we had to wake up at like 6.45, 7, you know. But we had a, we had a great time, man. Um, let's see. Um, we don't always go to Venice Beach, work out at Muscle Beach, you know. Uh, Fuck hell, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Freaking work out outside, get your tan on, freaking get your pump on, see the birds dude, walking dude. back and forth. It was great. Have you been there recently? Did you go there when you did the mocap? No, a few I, ago? they go in San, they, um, they shoot in San Francisco now so um, oh. i haven't been to uh, la in quite some time but i heard it they revamped it huh no no i guess it's like i've seen videos it's like 10 cities like homeless really? people are just yeah yeah all oh. over that place yeah wow bad yeah. dude That's la crazy. la and what it That's used fun. to be man yeah yeah oh man yeah, I miss the times, man. I miss those days. It was really, we had a blast. It was like a paid vacation, you know? We'd go to work, work hard, and then just, gosh, have fun afterwards. You know, whatever it is we did, you know, go go Sunset Boulevard, uh, meet up with uh, Muhammad Hassan, uh, Mark Magnus, because he lived in yeah. California at the time. We'd go have dinner with, you know, hang out with him. Uh, gosh, you know, I think Beast was there, you know, meet up with him, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. It was good times. Yeah, I'm going down memory lane, you know. Um, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. <laughs> and actually, I have uh, the director who was my boss. That was like one of my good friends. So shout out to Brian Williams if you're listening to this, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I brother. Know him, yeah. Yeah, great guy. Yeah. And um, yeah, he's uh, he's one of the one of the boys for sure. <laughs> so I met some like real, real friends out of it too, you know. It, it was a great job. Uh, Rex Gardner's back on the show. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Views on Big Lad Blubber Ray Dudley. <laughs> Blubber. Oh man. <laughs> um. Yeah, you know, I worked Bubba. Let's see here. I worked him about four or five times for House of Hardcore for Tommy Dreamer. Um. Honestly, great worker, great talker. You know. Um. Yeah, I. Uh... So your experience was a lot more positive than me and Paul London's experience. Yeah, I never really, um, you know, I never really had any bad encounters. I want to say with Bubba, he's very serious. You know, I know that, and like, um, you know, it's definitely like you can have Bubba's match. You know, like pretty much you can throw in your two cents, but you're gonna have what you know what he comes up with pretty much, and that's what you know. And and honestly, like. They were good ideas, so it wasn't like I was like, well, you know, I mean, like, it worked, you know, for what it was. Uh, but what was your experience? You said with, uh, what was Paul, you said Paul London, you said? Yeah, me and Paul didn't enjoy working with him at all. Really? Yeah. Just... I, I do remember him, like, he overstayed his welcome when he chopped me one time. <laughs> oh, did he chop you in the ribs? Not in the ribs. It was it was in the chest. It was safe, okay. but it was just like, dude, let me sell. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. it was like um, one chop, another chop, another chop. And by the fourth one, uh, Kenny just took me and threw me in the ring. <laughs> and then Kenny took one because I just had enough at that point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Uh, but that that was, I mean, honestly, if I have to say anything, that was, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm a I'm a big boy. I can freaking take it. But. Uh, yeah, just let me sell. Uh, I'll put it over. Just one's good enough. Yeah. You know? He had this habit of, like, when he was selling, he'd be on his knees, and he'd chop you right in the ribs. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. That no. fucking that sucks. Did you, did you ever get one of them? Oh, every night. Really? Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Anyway, on to the questions. Yeah, that Noah sent the uh, message about Ben Rao and... Um, Michelle McCall said it's in the reports, not a conspiracy. Really? Hmm. No, way. Um, we're on so social media, we're on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook at, at Cafe de Rene. If you can find the reports and send us some screenshots, please do so. We'd love to have a look on them, please. Yeah, we're going to do our little investiga investigation here. Um, 
Rex Gardner, thank you again, mate. Uh, to be honest, I don't think same. I don't think it's the best kept secret if Benoit was with Michelle McCall would stand out way too much. Like so. Yeah. Before we start this channel, I never heard about it. But since starting this channel and like the conversations we've had about Benoit, a few fans has mentioned it. And if I look at I'm sure I tell you, believe nothing on what you hear and half of what you see. see. <laughs> I was with the company. And yeah. I've never seen that or heard that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Don't know, but yeah. No, if, um, if you've got any screenshots of it, send it to our social media and yeah, we'll definitely have a look. Uh, Mr. Kroger, hey, Mike, ever saw any creepy stuff on the road? <laughs> any creepy stuff on the road? Um, any creepy stuff on the road? Hmm. Not that I can think of right now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, Come on. <clears throat> uh, any creepy stuff on the road? Um, nah, I got. Well, we're talking there. about Benoit. I would see Benoit pop guys zits and shit. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who was it? I think it was. Um, uh, Chris Harvard, Chris Nowinski, he would like pop his zits and like get off. Oh, on it. Yeah. really? Yeah. People like some people are infatuated with that stuff, man. Like, I had girlfriends women. who were into that. Yeah, seriously, the yeah, like, pick that white head. I'm just like, why? <laughs> you <Yeah>. like that? <laughs> but usually crazy. those girls are pretty wild in, in the bedroom, too, though. Oh, well, saying. it was an option I made. Yeah, take the pros with the cons, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Rex! Mike, you're getting lucky tonight. Out of these three, who would you bring out for a fun night? Melina, Alicia Fox, or Victoria? Oh, oh man. I mean, I've always, man, I've always been a big fan of Victoria, you know? Uh, yeah, she's always, um, yeah, she, she always did it for Mikey Mondo. I've always was uh, very attracted to her. Very beautiful lady. And she's, like, cool. You know what I mean? She's, like, one of the boys. Like, she's, yeah. like, um, I don't know. She's just uh, has a great personality, you know. Um, and she, she can wrestle. She can work. She can, you know. She's she's an all around straight A, in my opinion. So there we go, oh, yeah. Victoria. If you're listening, yeah, Mondo that's approves. right. Mikey Mondo yeah. wants you. Mikey Mondo approves. <laughs> Mikey Mondo approves. <laughs> yeah. uh, another question here for Mike. Mike, on a typical raw taping, what was the day like? Fucking long. Oh, long. 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 Oh. A lot of hurry up and waiting. Yeah. You know? Get there at 1 o'clock, 12, 1230, whatever it is. Put your bags down. Go to catering. Get coffee. Go to the bleachers. Sit. Wait. Finally, the agents get out of their meeting. You meet up with your agent. You figure out what you're doing. Yeah. And you wait some more. Go eat some more. And finally, when it gets time to like, I don't know, 3.34, you get with your agent and whoever you're working that night, figure out what you're doing. Uh, of course, go out by the ring periodically, see what's going on, see who's wrestling in the ring on the, you know, those workouts that they do beforehand. Um, you know, then finally you hear doors on the loudspeakers, you go back, get switched into your gear, uh, go over with what you're doing one last time, make sure nothing's changed. Uh, then showtime, watch the show, your segment comes up, go out and do your thing, tear down the house, take a shower, get with whoever you're riding with. When the show's over, head to the next town or actually TV, you'd be flying home. So go to the hotel, fly home. And, uh, that's pretty much a typical day in a nutshell. Well, well put. I, I didn't explain that, Renee. <laughs> no, it was pretty accurate. Pretty accurate, right? Yeah. 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 Jam, how are these Steve's backstage? Trish, Lita, <laughs> Mickey, Maria, Ashley, RIP, <laughs> Nina, Michelle. Okay, we'll go one by one. Uh, Trish, yeah, uh, spent a little time with her. Uh, she left just as our run was beginning. Uh, really super cool. Um, I actually, 
because Serena, it was when I was dating Serena, Serena's big inspiration was Trish. And I asked uh, Trish if she would uh, sign an 8x10 to give to Serena and uh, made Serena's day like she loved it, you know. And Trish was more than happy to do that for me. So that was really cool. That always sticks out in my brain. Um, let's see here. Lita. Yeah, Lita's awesome. Really cool. She was with Edge uh, doing the uh, work in Cena and the main events at the time when I was on the road. Uh, super cool girl. Again, one of the boys. Uh, same could be said for Mickey. I go I go back farther with Mickey, though. Uh, I spent a lot of time with her in OVW. And, um, she, yeah, always. Mickey's, yeah, she's great, you know. She can work. Super cool person. Um, you know, uh, travel with her when she was dating Kenny for a while, you know, uh, when so we got to like, get to know her a little bit more personally and everything like that. Super down to earth kind of uh kind of girl for sure uh maria canellis uh, i'm guessing uh that is yeah. yeah maria again another one who always treated me through with respect um uh, she's, she's married to mike bennett uh again could be married to a nicer dude i love bennett always always a fan of his um and uh, you know maria really i think she really proved a lot of people wrong you know she really embraced the business i think and she wasn't just one of those diva search girls you know and she really made something of herself and uh she had, has a great career i don't know if she's still doing it or not but um if she is that's awesome and good for her you know um she uh i spent a lot of time with her in ring of honor my first round you know around go around or whatever like that so i hung out with her just because you know Again, I really didn't know many people there, but I, you know, I knew her, and we gravitated towards each other there a little bit. Uh, Ashley Mazzaro, fellow Long Island native, uh, I miss Ashley. She um, lived a couple towns away from me, and um, she came down to the NYWC Wrestling School a couple times to uh, kind of train, you know, and just kind of work out the kinks when she was going to get back in the ring. And um, it was really sad when I heard that she passed away because um, I was just Facebook messaging her not long ago before that. that and because I wanted to see if she, she wanted to come down. And uh, again, you know, she's always welcome to come down to the school and stuff like that. And um, yeah, and I got to know her a little bit when I was on the road, you know, and it was just kind of cool that we were both from Long Island. And uh, yeah, rest in peace for sure, you know. I uh, definitely miss her. She was a really cool chick. Um, Melina. Yeah, Melina. Yeah. Um, spent a lot of time with her in OVW. Um, Super cool. It's nice to me. No complaints. Um, you know, she, um, I thought she made the package with Eminem. You know, she was definitely the icing on the cake with Eminem, you know, and uh, I, I think if she wasn't there, it would have been completely different. Not taking anything away from Joey Mercury or Johnny Nitro, but it just, it was the three of them that made it work. You know what I mean? And uh, it's like, you take one of them, one of them out of the equation. It's just not the same. Um, but she was a great manager. You know, I thought, I thought she, uh, did the little things really good. You know, she implemented and got involved when the time was right. And she stayed small when stuff was going on in the ring. She never took away from the action, you know, and she turned out to be really good. And I think she was another diva search girl. So she really like kind of had a career after that. That's awesome. And uh, Michelle McCool, I'm McCool, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah. um, saw her recently, not recently, but last time I was at the performance center and uh, she just congratulated me. I thought it was really cool that I was down there. Um, she said, you know, she said something like, you know, we need guys that like know what you're doing and stuff and have the experience. And, you know, I guess she was insinuating that I did have the experience and that it was uh, nice to see me down there. Uh, I don't know her too much personally. She was always on SmackDown when I was on Raw. Um, but from my encounters with her and everything like that, it's always been really nice. And she's always been real. She was in Deep South, I think, for most of the time when I was in OVW. Um, so I didn't really have much interaction with her, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I think she respects me and I definitely respect her. Oh, you got your money's worth there, champ. <laughs> <laughs> so, what uh, do you think, Renee? <laughs> that was awesome, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm just shooting, brother. Shoot, shoot from the hip. Okay, we don't have much time left with uh, Mike Mongo, guys, because yeah. he has got to go teach a class. So yes, what time is it? Up. Yeah, we're good. Okay. We're good? Okay. Got a few more minutes. Yep. Uh, Joe Bagshot, any ideas where the Spirit Squad uh, could have gone had they decided to keep you together, ditch the cheerleader deal, and make you a serious act? Um, yeah, yeah, turn you into, like, the basketball diaries instead of, like, the Spirit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Go dark. Yes. That would have been cool. I agree. That, that could have worked. It could have been uh, something, like, definitely could have went down that road. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
Yeah, well, there was ideas. That's the thing. Um, the plan initially was for Kenny to go heel singles, for Jeter to go babyface singles, for me, Mitch, and uh, Ziggler to be paired up as a trio. And uh, the idea we came up with was like the Frat Pack, which was kind of like a spinoff of what we did with the Spirit Squad. We waited outside Vince's office for, I don't know, 20 minutes or whatever after TV. Finally, he opens the door. We have a minute with him. And he gave us a handshake agreement. Like, I like it. Let's do it. And we left that day on cloud nine because it was like, all right, we still uh, going to have jobs, you know, when this is all done with. Um, unfortunately, and this is something, I, again, you, you look back and you do things differently. This is one of those instances. Um, it's that the, when we were supposed to, so the whole week we get everything prepared, right? Uh, we get the paddle, we get the jackets, we get the outfits, you know, we were, we, you know, we have these vignette ideas, which we pitched to Vince in the office and he, he was down with it. Um, but the problem is, is that our flight info got canceled and they didn't need us to TV, uh, that following Monday. Um, so being that we've been going to every single raw for the past year anyway, we're like, okay, we'll sit this one out and next Monday we'll meet with Vince and pitch the idea to him then. And that was a bad move. Um, if I can go back and change things, I wish I would have bought my own ticket and Ziggler agrees. I remember we, sh- we would have flew ourselves there and, uh, cause maybe things would have been different, but honestly, um, that, you know, they weren't, it never happened. And, um, we got sent back to OVW for real, <laughs> you know? So, um, uh, Kenny had his heel run with the uh, rated RKO, I think, and then went on. Yeah. Um, yeah, me and Ziggler were back in OVW. Um, and Mitch, I think I let go. So that's what happened. That was, but that was what I know f- post Spirit Squad, what could have happened, you know. But I like Renee's idea better. <laughs> we should do that. The darker side. Darker side. <laughs> uh, I think you've pretty much just answered it with that last uh, question. Um, yeah, they didn't know when we were going to end. They were going week to week with us. Um, I don't think they had a plan. And just one day we showed up the TV and it was like, all right, guys, this is it. And it's like, okay, but can we do this? Can we do this? Nope. This is it. Okay. That's what you want. That's, you know, we always give alternatives, you know, we, uh, in my opinion, I'll try to answer all the questions here at once. In my opinion, do I think it had more life? Yes, I do. Um, you know, uh, do I think we could have like wrestled each other or something? Yeah, we could have done. We could have done a lot of things. You know, the Spirit Squad wasn't dead by any means, but you know, it's 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 not my show. And um, when it comes to time to end, you can give alternatives and suggestions. But at the end of the day, um, they say no. You can't fight Mother Nature sometimes, and that's just the end. C'est la vie, as we say in French. C'est la vie. Right. That? C'est la vie. Yeah, that's life. In French, yeah. That's life, man. What are you gonna do? Freaking hold them, hold them up. <laughs> we'll get your looking good yeah. boys, looking real good T-shirt at the Cafe de Rene Shopify. Here we go. There you go. Uh, I want to get my T-shirt. Great, thank you, uh, <laughs> Melina. In my opinion, is one of the greatest ladies to come out of her era. She can wrestle, and um, she is hot. But is it true that she had fun with? I'm, I'm guessing they means Mike Knox. When she was with Johnny Nitro, I never heard of uh, having any interactions with Mike Knox. Not that I know him. No, unless he met you <laughs> <laughs> with me. Hey, no, not with me either. Unfortunately, <laughs> no, no, no. Mike Knox and Melina dated first. They were dating right. like in the independence. Then Melina got brought up, and then her mm-hmm. and Johnny Nitro, boom. And then wasn't there a deal where she cheated on Nitro with Batista? Oh yeah, that happened. I heard then, of it with, like, uh, with Batista. That's the thing I know of or heard of, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you heard about that. Yeah, no, but not, I never heard of Mike Knox. No, not that I know of. Well, no, Mike Knox and Lena dated. I think because they're both from Arizona, possibly on the independent scene. Mm. They're dating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Someone, uh, someone I won't say who, till that person says. But someone said to me that they would drive with Nitro. And with Melina to drop her off to the airport, and this person said to me, Johnny uh, Nitro, full, full well, uh, full well knew that she was cheating on him with uh, Batista, and she he would still take her to the airport. I did hear that. I did hear that. But you know what, though, honestly, and I'm shooting here. 
I don't know how much battery I have left. I'm trying to figure it out. I'll check in a second. Uh, you think his man, Johnny Nitro, uh, John uh, Hennigan, he's a, just a genuinely good guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. He's just a good hearted person. And um, you'll never hear me say a bad word to say about John Hennigan, the person. You know what I mean? Um, he's just, um, you know what, though? He, that shows you the type of guy he is, you know, like whatever, if that's true or not with Molina, you know, he's still not just going to throw her out to the side of the road and say, Fen, you know what I mean? He's still going to make sure that she's taken care of and safe. You know what I mean? And um, I think that says a lot about his character and his integrity as a man. You know what I mean? Um, just uh, just great, great guy. Great dude. And, uh, but, you know, every time I see him, like, you know, we don't miss a beat. You know, we just kind of pick up where we left off. I spent a lot of time with him in OVW before he became Johnny Nitro or Eminem even existed, you know, so... Uh, I got to know the person really well. I'm really, and he's always been really a stand-up guy. Ditto. Ditto. <laughs> Last question. What's your favorite cheese? Pepper Jack. For real? Yes, absolutely. So good. Pepper Jack Cheddar's all right, too. Yeah, well, it depends on, you know, we're talking about pizza. We're talking about a sandwich. You know, we're talking yeah. about, uh, you know, uh, that kind of cheese. Unless I'm thinking different kind of into window or I don't know. We're talking about food, right? Cheese? Yeah, we're not talking about like dick cheese, are we? <laughs> oh man. Renee, you're bad, bro. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I'm looking good. I'm looking good, boy. Well, okay, let's give a last plug for your all your social media and everywhere you're gonna be, all your appearances, Mondo. Give it boom. Okay, man. Well, here it is in a nutshell. You can follow me on Twitter at the Mike Mondo. You could um the same thing with my Instagram, the Mike Mondo. If you're in the Long Island area, tri-state area, and you're looking to become a professional wrestler, I am the head trainer at the NYWC Wrestling Academy, which I'm heading to here shortly. Uh, you can go to nywcwrestling.com. Uh, they also have social media, NYWC Wrestling on Twitter, and as well as Facebook. Um, I am making my return to uh, the ring February 25th at Psycho Circus to face my nemesis, my former friend, who I'm so happy and glad is out of my life for good. It was the first Christmas I had peace and serenity and that uh, I'm going to whip his ass on February 25th. I am going to show him Diggy Rods. That's right. I'm talking to you if you're listening. I'm going to show you it's gut check time. I'm going to put myself size 12 straight up your ass and you better come prepared. You better come ready to go because I am going to be there and be square and I am coming to fight, pal. And I hope you are too. February 25th at the Psycho Circus. Be there or be square. See, there's the Rip Rogers promo class for you yeah. right there, Bell. <laughs> <laughs> On the fly. Two, Thank one. you for counting me down, Renee. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you so much. And anybody listening, if you're in the New York area, go check out Mondo. He's an awesome guy and awesome trainer. I give him the cafe approval. All right, Mike. Thank you so much, pal. Have a happy new year, okay? Be safe. Yes, sir. Thank you guys very much, man. I appreciate you having me on your show. And um, maybe we can do it again sometime in the future if you'd like. I would love yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to bring on Mitch. Cool. You yeah. Mitch. <laughs> There's got, I, yes, we have to at some point. And oh, my God. Can find him, you guys can find them. <laughs> we're going to find them. Oh, my God. Okay, man. Take care. Peace. Peace, Bye. man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.